So after working with the FBI to take down that nameless person by coordinating witnesses and more, it looks like Australia really, really wants that nameless person to pay. Apparently, they want that nameless person to pay bad enough, get this, that they're willing to elevate this issue of perjury to the Australian Senate within two weeks. Yeah, you thought things were going bad within the Virginia courtroom. Yeah, imagine having an entire continent saying, let's take that person down. You may be, just maybe, making fun of Australia again and again wasn't the wisest choice. Uh, two days later, I'm called back to accept this award. Um, I'm assuming on behalf of my dogs, this one boo. Um, well, unfortunately, they could not make it tonight. <laughs> What do I know, though? I've never smuggled something into another country, made fun of them after the fact, after they gave me a break. So maybe, maybe this was a good idea, right? Fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. Ah, so hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing excellently. And I really want to drive something home with this mockery. You see the name right there, Mr. Joyce, that is mentioned. To comfort Mr. Joyce in his hour of need, I have sent him a box of New Zealand's finest kiwi fruit, assuming this passes his biosecurity laws. Well, that Mr. Joyce that she decided to make fun of, and she's done it quite a few times, is none other than Barnaby Joyce. Now, back when she was doing that, this guy was a heavy hitter. Now, though, we're talking about the Minister of Infrastructure, Transport, and Regional Development. And, oh, by the way, this person is also the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. Yep, that's right. Really drink that in right there. The Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. Yeah, when you hear about what's going on with an ongoing perjury investigation and how this stuff it's actually going to be moving to the Australian Senate in a couple of weeks. Remember, this isn't a fight that Australia picked. Oh no, that nameless person decided they would pick that. What dog, by the way? And hey, look, I guess some habits die hard. Look at me smuggling that in. Yeah, probably not the smartest thing that anyone has ever done. Now, the place that decided to drop this bombshell, by the way, is from the Australian.com. We are talking about a paper in Australia, so that actually makes sense. Props to them, by the way, for covering this stuff. You've seen how there is a lack of coverage in the mainstream and props to the person that brought this to everyone's attention. I appreciate the heck out of that, too. Now, as far as this article is concerned, it actually does a very good job, number one, of summarizing exactly what transpired back when, number two, bringing up punishment or lack thereof when it came to that nameless person. They were basically fined $1,000 and were told to film a biosecurity apology alongside J.D., Huh, biosecurity. No wonder they made fun of that, right? And then they remind you here that it's been 15 months since this broke. 15 months since Struth revealed that the government was investigating that nameless person for possible perjury over the pistol and boo saga, and yet the Agriculture Department refuses to provide an update to the case. Huh. And then they bring up this right here. The Agriculture Department says it has been working with the Commonwealth Public Prosecutor on that nameless person case for more than a year. So Struth decided to sniff around and to see how it was going. Quote, we are unable to provide a time frame on the investigation and are not in a position to provide an estimate of cost, a spokesperson said. The department cannot comment any further on, and you notice these words right here, an ongoing investigation. Drink that in again, an ongoing investigation. Now, along with that, they brought up the Australian Senate 
pushing this to the highest levels of authority within two weeks. And the idea that this, it could land somebody in jail. Why? Because the maximum penalty for perjury in Queensland is 14 years in jail. Now, typically, you wouldn't have anything like that come up with an actor either. But this is somebody that has mocked the highest positions of authority. Yeah, that's not working out for them well at all. Now, as far as an investigation is concerned, we already knew that this, it was number one going on, but number two, we knew that this, it was going on at the highest levels of authority. You can see proof of that right here. In a Senate Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Legislation Committee meeting, listen to this. Um, There was a question this morning in relation to... But I can confirm the department is investigating that matter. So there was um, evidence presented in the London court case which uh, suggested false statements were provided in the court case in Australia in 2016. So we are investigating that. Uh, so, thanks. so what's the timeline? You expect the, that investigation and decision made about... Um, as I understand it, the, the former state manager of uh, Johnny Depp, uh, Kevin Murphy, said in a witness statement that he was told that he told, uh, and I quote, by email, telephone and in person that she could not take the dogs to Australia because the relevant paperwork and permits were not complete and the required 10-day quarantine arrangements had not been put in place. Murphy continued, Ms. later told the court in Australia that I had told her it was fine to bring the dogs into Australia. That is false. I never told her this. Yes, so Senator, we understand that to be the case or the evidence provided in the London court case, and giving a false testimony is an offence under the Crimes Act, so that is what we are now investigating. Now, along with that, you had this absolute bombshell drop. You'll notice this, it's from the Australian government, by the way, and if you look at the title of this, it's, quote, Decision on Your Freedom of Information Request. Somebody asked about everything that was going on, and, ah, they got a response and a good one. Now, along with documents, evidence, explanations, and on, you had the list of documents for release. Now, here, you'll notice what they did release, these things, number one and two, they give you, versus this. And I want you to read this with me. So, you have document number three, pages nine and ten, The date on this, this is 2020. Now, the description of what was going on here, investigation progress report, and it's basically saying, nope, you can't have that. Why can't you have that? Well, information in relation to a current investigation exempt under, and they tell you why current investigation. Now, we know, too, from sources, very good sources, by the way, that the FBI, they had been coordinating with Australia, setting up witnesses and beyond. You have had this go on, again, at the upper levels of power. Yeah, it's still going on, too. Australia hasn't forgotten, and that nameless person, ah, they just keep having bad day after bad day after bad day.